Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry for the video quality. I plan on being only in the corner uh, for most of this video. So I'm shooting this on a webcam using the OBS Studio. I um, feel like I need to start out my videos from now on saying that if you like this video, my next video will probably be totally different. So uh, please take that into account if you subscribe to my channel. My videos go all over the place. It is the Gordon Tarpley channel. It's not Mr. 3D Printer Guy or Mr. Uh, paint guy, whatever the, whatever you think it is I do. I, I do all kinds of stuff, so my videos reflect that. All right, anyway, let's get to today's video. Um, uh, as you may know, a while back I made this mask, and I really like it. I'm very fond of this one. And um, a, not a little while ago, I actually broke the mold for this mask, and it makes it difficult for me to make more. I could probably repair the mold, but... And I haven't done it yet. And I figured it'd be really cool to redo this mask, which is made out of latex. Um, make this out of silicone. So it's a much more fitted mask and actually moves with my face. Like this is just kind of a, a stiff. It's made to be like a background character. That's why I made these. Just a background generic aliens. Um, but if I could make it where it actually interacted with my face, maybe had some animatronics in it, that would be really awesome. So I considered remolding it and starting over that way. But I think what I'm gonna do is bring this thing into ZBrush and um, do it digitally, and then I can recreate all the animatronic parts, make sure it fits properly, all that stuff digitally, and then 3D print the molds and all the, the components, which I think is gonna be really cool. Now, before the mold broke, I had made another copy, which is not fully painted, and it's filled with foam, so it's actually, the most true to the shape um, of when it actually sculpted the the alien itself is this is the closest to the shape. Whereas this mask, it's flexible. It kind of moves a little bit when uh, you know if I was trying to mold it, it would be I don't know if I'd get the most original form. So this one is the closest to the original sculpt. So I decided to do a photogrammetry scan of this using a free software called Meshroom. Now, I'm going to open that right now, so we'll switch down to, um, to this view. Hey guys, check it out. And um, hopefully it's still running because I minimized everything. I can't even tell if I'm on camera still. So Meshroom opens uh, like its own application. It doesn't really install itself on the computer, so it does this, opens up, probably installs viruses, who knows what. And it opens up in this space here. You have all these nodes where you can control things. Um, and I've only used this a few times, so I'm not super well versed in this program, but it does look like there's a lot of adjustments that can be made that probably improve the quality of the scans. Um, I'm going to open this up. I took all the photos earlier. We'll talk about that in a second. Where am I going? Desktop. That's where we want to go. Uh, blue alien photos. So you can see I've taken a whole bunch of pictures of this thing outside from as many angles as I can. Basically, you're going to drag and drop them into the images folder here. Close this out. Um, I did this in the middle of the day, pretty even lighting. And I walked around and you can see I've got all of these angles of these photos here. You can click on them and see that I try to get as much coverage as possible. Um, basically what this program will do is stitch all this stuff together and make a 3D model, which is decent for what it is, to, considering I'm taking all these pictures on my cell phone. Um, puts together a pretty decent model. So basically this is the thing. You drag your images in. Um, you can go down here and control by looking at these nodes here. You can see all the settings are buried in here. So meshing again I've only done this um, really one real scan and a couple tests they came out okay actually one of them I used for a prop restoration recently and it worked uh, surprisingly well um, so let me see here feature extraction uh, normal let's go to high now, I tried these in the different modes between normal, medium, and high, and it was pretty close, the quality, but the time that it took to process them was 
crazy. Like I did one in Ultra, it took hours and hours. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this set. I'm just going to put this on high. I'm not doing any other crazy settings. And check, make sure I got all my photos in here. And um, I am going to click go. And I'm going to pop back in later once it's all, all ready. Feature extraction, high, um, image matching. Yeah, I haven't really messed with any of these settings here. So there's not a lot of tutorials online. So I feel like it's a thing I'm going to have to experiment with to get better at this program. But anyway, let's let's run this and um, see kind of where we end up here. We only got our start thing went away. That's cool. <laughs> All right, let's go back up here. Minimum image per setup. Uh, per step four five image folder so yeah we got to select the folder here I think is what what it's waiting for so I'm gonna put it back into the folder we were just in which is on my desktop sorry I'm spacing out I need to eat some dinner here I'm, I'm hungry so we'll select that folder and now if I hit start, it'll start going. My computer is going to start making crazy fan noises. So once I start this, I'm going to stop the recording and I'll be back. Start that. And okay, so I'm checking back in. Now, um, a few minutes ago, I looked and I realized that I hadn't set up the, the save location. So when you hit start, it's actually up here is where you want to hit start. Um, and if you hit start here, it kind of processes the images, but it doesn't finalize everything. My dog is about to trip over the cord. Hang on a second. I'm back. Sorry about that. So when you start, you actually have to start up here. Uh, again, I haven't used this program a ton of times, so um, I'm getting better at it. When you hit start here, it asks you to set the save location so I set the same folder where I initially planned on saving this step and you can see the progress bar now goes all the way across here and it's it's going now so it's in progress this is where it's at what is that maybe like 33 percent done so um, I just wanted to show that while it's going since I kind of goofed up there and uh, we'll check back in a bit see where it's at okay I'm back and it has stopped it looks like it's finished, but this little bar has not quite completed, so maybe it hit some kind of error. Um, there is down here image matching, multi SMS, SFM. I'm not exactly sure what that stands for, um, but it branches off from here. I don't understand why it's red. Maybe it failed at some point and is missing a little bit of data, but we can see here we've got our um, cloud data, or point cloud data, I should say, and shows all of our cameras, all the spots where the photos were taken from, which is really cool. Uh, another thing we can do here is we can turn on the mesh, turn off that structure data, and you can see it's picked up a lot of the surrounding area, which I'll have to get rid of, and turn on texturing, turn off the mesh, and here it is with the texture. It looks really cool. So if you're using this for like a game asset or something, and you just need something that's textured, this looks awesome. Uh, again, this is the, the actual 3D model is going to have some cleanup to do, but we can see that with the texturing on here, you can pretty much see where everything is. So let me turn texture off again and we'll look at the mesh. So you can see the mesh is pretty gross. It's bumpy and it's got a lot of stuff to clean up. Not, not clean at all. This isn't a big deal to me because I'm going to be doing so much rework to this mask. I want it to look generally the same, but uh, if it's not perfect, it's fine because um, it gets, it's going to get reworked. I'm going to probably tighten up some stuff in the mouth just so that it's more pliable when I make a silicone version and um, all that stuff. So let's see if we can get this mesh into ZBrush. Let's save this. Uh, save see what happens and like I said it stopped here for some reason now when you output these things it makes a gigantic file somewhere else so we're gonna open ZBrush here see what happens 
uh, all the ZBrush stuff, and it's going to want me to update and hide this crap. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, import, and we're going to go to desktop, burp, blue alien mask, meshroom cache, and we go under meshing, I think. Let's check and see. And there's our mesh. And it'll, again, it's probably going to be this big, crazy uh, mess of stuff. So there's the whole scene. We don't need all this stuff. We just want that little mask right in the middle. So we will delete all of this extra crap. Don't need that little stool. Um, and the scale factor doesn't matter a ton because um, it is going to get rescaled slightly. The uh, life cast that I did this on is not on myself and it's uh, actually the same life cast I used when I made my Robocop helmet a while back so it's for Sam Macaroni you could probably find his YouTube channel if you wanted to um, and so there it is real rough but again we got our, our major forms are all in place so what we're going to do is go to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Now I could bring the textures into ZBrush and apply it to this, but I don't really, it doesn't matter to me. I have a reference because I've got the, you know, the actual thing here. I can just reference that to get everything back to close. So I will probably do that in a little bit. I have another ZBrush project to do shortly. So now I've deleted all of the excess data here. Let me center this. So in ZBrush, you have your transform. If you hit this button, it'll center that to the non-masked area. So that's there. Let's back this out a little bit. What we're going to do is I'm just going to try to rotate this to a position where you see our little dummy up here in the corner so we can tell it's the front. Um, I'm going to rotate this so that he faces forward. We got it from above. Turn it around and leave it about there-ish. Maybe a little maybe a little more. And to the front. Now I'll use this line at the bottom here to try to level it up. Signs. This life cast is actually slightly tilted, so that's that. We can delete this stuff off the bottom, make it a little more level. There we go. Now I'm going to reset this form here so that it's uh, not crooked. So, what I do is I unlock this and you hit this little reset button here and then it straightens it out so now it's you know oriented properly in ZBrush. This is really handy for a lot of things. You can tell it's not quite centered it's just because this thing is you know the whole statue is a little asymmetrical you can see there's some height difference in the shoulders and so forth. Um, how does it look with the eyes? Um, I'm gonna level it a little bit so the eyes are closer to level even if the rest of it isn't just because that will make it easier when I go to do the animatronics. Now this is, again, it's a little asymmetrical, which is totally fine. It's pretty normal for a lot of sculptures that have some asymmetry. But if I can get it closer to level, I think we're going to be a little better off. I'm going to split the difference and try to get these little bones close and then the eyes. That's pretty good. Go back here, do the same thing again, kind of make that line level visually. It'll look a little better. Don't want to chop the mask. Um, cool. And then we're going to unlock this, reset the point here. And if you hold down the Alt key, you can actually drag this around. So I'm going to center it to what the center of the face really is. So the, even though the shoulders are a little asymmetrical, this is kind of centered up. And then we can 
um, send this to re like basically reset. And if you don't unlock this, and you hit reset. It um it should move it to the, the center point in the scene. Or no, I'm sorry. Is it home? There it is. That's the one. Home. I'm sorry. So now it should be centered on this. So if I turn on perspective. So now we've got the alien mask you know, basically in ZBrush and I can start doing the cleanup on it, which should be pretty fun. Uh, let's see here. So what I'm going to do is save the tool. I usually don't save the whole project file unless it's really involved. I usually just save the tool, which is up here. Save as. If you go up here to document, save, it saves like the whole project. It doesn't usually matter. So I go save as. Again, we're going to go back to our blue alien. Where is it? Right there. Selected already. I suck at this. You can tell. Um, blue alien. Z brush. And we'll just put V1 dash import. That way, it's the raw import data. There's nothing else. And once I start changing it, if I ever need to go back, I can refer back to this and we're good. So that is saved. So now I've got my little alien head. Okay, so we're back. It is the next day. I have a different hat on. I need a haircut, which is why. Um, <clears throat> same shirt, because I'm gross. Let's see, we are going to reload that tool that we're working on here, which is a blue alien. So we've got the import version of this item here on the screen. Uh, once you pull an item on screen, you hit the letter T and it opens up this edit mode here. You can just click edit, but T is a shortcut. And we have our item. Now, there are ways to smooth this overall, like a general kind of smoothing that will get rid of a lot of these surface bumps. I don't like to use it very often for scan kind of data just because it does get rid of the surface bumps, but it also can affect some of the details that you might want to work on. So I'd rather have the bumps there, work around them for a little bit, and then do the smoothing by hand. And yeah, it takes a little bit longer, but I feel that the, um, the overall effect is better. So anyway, here's our model. Now, I noticed a thing the other night is that the brush size, if you can see, um, is really uh, gigantic, which means that this little guy here is really small. So I'm going to merge in my, I have like a kind of a dummy life cast that I use. I've got two of them. One is basically me without any modifications, and I have one where I've actually shrunk my features a little tiny bit that I uh, intend to use for doing silicone masks. And when you make a silicone mask, you want it to be really snug. So I want my features on the core of the mold to reflect what's on my face, like, you know, be close to my own face. But if I make them a little bit smaller, that means that the mask will fit me very snugly. So I've done that. I opened the mouth a tiny bit so that I can sculpt the edges of the lips and everything so that they'll actually hold on my face. If you, somewhere, some other time, I'll show you one of these silicone masks. There's a company called Immortal Masks that makes uh, silicone pullover masks that are really amazing. They move really well with the face. The masks I'm going to be doing here are going to be done in a similar fashion, and hopefully in a few months I'll be able to show those kind of things. So anyway, back to this. So we've got our guy here, and um, I'm going to load up another tool, which is on my desktop, I think. Um, you have my corrective positive, and what that means is that it has correct positive, correct positive, uh, rank or for silicone. There we go. This is the one I want. So I'll open this. And you'll see I have another alien that I started on this one. So this is an alien that I was working on. Um, and this is, let me show you this what this live cast looks like. So I'll turn off my alien face and eyes in the keys. We'll go to this. So so it's me, but I've opened my mouth just a little bit. Again, this helps it so if I make a, a sculpt with the mouth, it will actually, um, the inside of the mask will actually contour to my lips better. Um, I've shrunk all my features a little bit and I've blended out my ears into the, into the head here, which makes it, uh, you know, a little bit easier to work as a core. And then 
these keys here are turn on live boolean. Let me see. Um, so those key into the surface of the things into the surface of the life cast, and that way, uh, when I make the the outer mold, the, the shell, those will key together and have a point so everything lines up properly. Because this whole thing of me is going to actually be on the inside of the mold for another video. I'll get into that later. But what we want to do is we want to copy. Let's see. I'm going to take this. I'll turn off live boolean for a second. I'm going to. What am I looking at here? Yeah, I'm going to take this and copy it. I could probably merge them together and do this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to paste this into this document, and then I'm going to go back over to uh, this one. It's a recovered tool. You can tell it crashed at some point a long time ago. Copy this, the keys, because I want to keep the keys as well. Go back to my blue alien and paste in the keys. So now. I've got my live cast here, and this is scaled appropriately. So if I was to 3D print this, it would come out the same size as me, which is what we want. Got my keys here. They're not important at the moment. And then we've got the blue alien. Where is he? Um, I centered him, I believe. So he is way down here. Now, this live cast came from in a full digital scan of me. So it's a, it is centered but I chopped away the bottom half, so now my life cast is kind of actually high up in the document. That's why it's way up here, and we're going to find that our alien head is way down here, and he's super little. That's why you can't even, if I zoom in on it, there he is, but he's tiny. So we're going to blow him up by scaling here in the middle. This, If you click the little yellow box, it scales it evenly in all directions. And I'm going to turn off perspective and just kind of line this up with myself. I'm going to put on transparency. It goes this way. I can kind of see where it's going to go. Now, on this mask, the nose holes are where my eyes are in the mask. That's where I see out. So pull this in, rotate a little bit. And again, this was done on a different person's life cast. And they're a different shape than I am. So gonna work around that a little bit now you can see that my mouth and the mouth on this don't quite line up which is all right I'm debating whether I'm going to make this actually the silicone work directly with my face or if I want to make some kind of under skull structure that moves when I move and like kind of wears like a face mask and then connects to the inside of this it's complicated but we'll get into that uh, when it's time so Anyway, look at the front. Try to get this thing kind of centered on my life cast, which is pretty close right now. The nose holes are a little bit high. Rotate it down a tad. So this puts us in a, a pretty, a pretty good situation. It's close enough, and then I can make all my adjustments as I need to to uh, make this thing fit me better. It'll actually be nicer because the neck won't have to be as thick. When I sculpted this one, I made the neck big so I could pop my head through without putting a a seam up the back I didn't want to have to cut it so it's got a kind of a bigger neck but I wouldn't mind having a small neck on this one smaller or longer maybe so that'll be nice but anyway you can see what we did now it's scaled appropriately appropriate close and now we can start the cleanup on this mask so what I'm gonna do is just hide all this other stuff turn off transparency and I'm going to save this as, we're going to go back to the mask document, which was, we're at desktop, blue alien mask, and I'm going to say just V2. You know, I have to do my, my uh, iterations, because if you ever need to go back, it's good to be able to go back. And the version 3 will probably actually, I'm going to save a version 3 right now, because this way I can go back to this one and start at the very beginning, just in case. I'm... I have worked on computers for a long, long time, and I am very paranoid that stuff is going to crash or get corrupted or who knows what. So, anyway, we're here. We've got our alien. So, there's multiple things we can do. You see there's giant holes in the bottom and stuff everywhere. Um, actually, let me do this. I'm going to turn on my lasso brush so I can, my lasso selection tool. And I won't want this... Uh oh, see that? That was weird. 
What did I do? Move something. See, it's freaking out. So when I moved it, at some point, there was a little piece of geometry down at the bottom there. So we're going to select all of this. Wow, see how it did that? That's very weird. There must have been a hidden piece of geometry when I started. Um, so, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to hit delete hidden again. Modify typology, delete hidden, and we're going to see if it does that. Okay, so that's fixed. So I want to get rid of this little chunk here that's floating. We don't need that. And one thing we can do to see this a little bit better is we can go to display properties and hit double. And that means you'll be able to see the inside of the geometry as well as the outside of the geometry. So now we can see you know, what it looks like on the other side. Um, this isn't on by default, so it is helpful to use from time to time. So now we've got this little piece we don't want so I'm going to invert the selection now that piece is hidden we're going to go back to uh, our geometry and then modify topology which is already open delete hidden and now that little piece is gone so tip uh, usually what I would do is convert this to a dynamesh at some point soon which basically gives you like updatable geometry I'm gonna go in here right now before I do that and just hits the surface with a smooth tool and some of the areas that just don't matter all that much I'm just gonna smooth them down so this is the old life cast I technically could delete all this but you, I'll show you why I'm not going to in a minute um, so we've got all this data here everything's lumpy sometimes getting rid of the lumps is easier before I turn on the Dynamesh because the Dynamesh is going to make the resolution pretty high so Delete, calm this stuff down a little bit beforehand. And I'm going to turn the soft, the Z intensity on the smoothing tool down a little bit so it's just not quite as quick. And I'm just going to kind of go over some sections of the surface that I know I'm not going to be too worried about the detail here. Again, there's shortcuts to do this faster, but Every time I use them, I end up smoothing stuff that I don't want to smooth out. So I'm going to leave some of this boogery stuff by the details. And just sort of rip through real quick. Get rid of the little bumps. Now, I'm betting that if I can experiment with those settings in um, Meshroom, I will be able to eliminate some of this excess booger because there are a lot of settings to be adjusted in there that I have not played with at all. So if you know Meshroom and you have suggestions for me, please put them in the comments below because I would love to know what they are. Anything to save some of this process would be great. So that gives us a, a, a decent start, you know, and a lot of times I'll zoom back like this and just look at it from a distance and just make sure that the forms overall look okay. I'm not so concerned with that surface. It's just do the forms look all right. So this is uh, 660,000 plus polygons right now. I'm going to save this before I do anything else just because. And then... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Dynamesh. Now this is pretty big, so I'm not going to need the Dynamesh this really high. I'm going to turn off Blur. I'm just going to try it at 128 and see what happens, because it might be fine at low res. We'll see if it drops this. See it? The lowest res Dynamesh is at <laughs> almost 4 million polygons. So we're in good shape. I don't have to turn it up much. Dynamesh works on like a kind of a grid pattern, and the bigger the object is, the more resolution you're going to have even at a low resolution in Dynamesh, if that makes sense. So if like, if let's say, if you have your Dynamesh set up, the grid is always the same. So if your object is huge, then you're gonna get a lot of polys, even if the resolution is set low in Dynamesh. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know, I feel like I just repeated myself. I do it all the time, I'm sorry guys. Um, but one thing Dynamesh does is it closes the bottom. It'll close any holes in the mesh, which is kind of nice. Now I don't need the shoulders so I'm going to delete these things and I'm going to do this in a few extra steps. You could probably skip 
some of the steps I'm doing here, but I do this because sometimes if you have too many holes open, it'll make the calculations take a long time, but if you just open one at a time and, and uh, re-Dynamesh, um, delete hit in here, and you re-Dynamesh, it'll work faster than if I punch a bunch of holes and then re-Dynamesh and it has to try to figure out um, all the places it's patching. So, you know, it's a little bit of a, a general shape there, but anyway, this gets me started. I'm probably going to do a lot of the sculpting um, at another time, maybe. I'm going to start today, but uh, the real like work is going to be probably in a few weeks or so. So I'm going to get this set up here so that it actually sort of fits me and then um, print a miniature version on the new printer so we can have a look at that. Um, let me see. Boop. So yeah, there it is. The head's in there. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to do while we're on camera. Hopefully that shows you how you can bring an item from Meshroom into ZBrush and you have something to work with. Even if it's kind of rough, it's better than nothing. So um, yeah, hopefully that was useful to some of you. I'm going to get out of here and get back to work. And I got a Zoom meeting in four minutes. So I'm cutting this really close. All right. So yeah, thanks for stopping by. Um, I'll see you guys soon, and I'll do some updates on this. If you're curious about more ZBrush stuff, just post questions below, and I'll get into more detailed stuff. I don't feel like I'm really doing tutorials as much as just sort of showing my workflow a little bit. So, yeah, uh, I'm out of here. Have fun, kids, and I will see you soon.